I am Ann Angela Webb, the Animal Intuitive. This is the Animal Intuitive channel where we give animals a voice through animal communication, holistic pet care, all things to support animals and their and the pet parents as well. Tonight I'm going to be talking about some DNA testing that I did with my dogs because I know that a lot of people are interested in these tests. I did a lot of research before I purchased one or a couple of them actually. And I felt like it would just be a fun topic to talk about my, my DNA reveal. Please bear with me because, as I said, things did not pull in the way I wanted them to. Um, so I'm kind of having to, like, we'll do our best. I hope you stick around. <laughs> That's all I could tell you. Um, and I'm so glad that everyone's here. Good to see everybody. You know, tonight I have this as an interesting topic, DNA. It's a little bit in depth. Um, so I'm kind of just going to share with you the results that I had with my pets and talk a little bit about the experience that I had with these with these tests. So uh, thank you, Mel Mac. No worries. <laughs> Basically, what I did was I used so just to give you an overview. I used Embark recently, so I used Embark for both of my animals to do both genetic the, well the DNA. And then also for one of my dogs, I did some a little bit extra. I bought like an extra thing to test his um, his gut. However, I had about nine years ago, my dog Cheyenne is 10, about nine years ago, I did her, uh, actually it might have been 10 years ago, I used Wisdom Panel, which is another DNA testing. Now that was, of course, a very long time ago. I can actually still access that those records though, which is really interesting that you're able to do that. So I am able to look back and do a comparison, which I thought was interesting, because then I could say, well, okay, how correct were they with Wisdom Panel compared to Embark? So I have to just kind of disclaimer that um, the Wisdom Panel results are quite old. You know, I think you'll see that there's there. I don't think they would be much different at this point in time when, when I compare them to Embark. It's kind of interesting how this stuff works. So let me start actually with Kane. He's a little bit simpler. Kane is, we thought, so I had some surprising results, and that's part of why I wanted to share this with you. So Kane is, we thought, a German Shepherd, but looky here. We find out that he's 24.6% Border Collie. So that was quite shocking. Uh, we did not expect that. Let me just see if I can actually bring up his picture. So this would be, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see? Okay, so here's all their little pictures. So this is um, Kane on the left and a Border Collie on the right and Kane <laughs> um, looks pretty German Shepherd, right? Like that, you know, I, I would not have questioned that. We were actually told that from the rescue that it got him, that by the people that they rescued him from, that he came from a breeder. Uh, so it wasn't questioned. I don't know, they didn't get any certification or anything. And it turns out he is, he's got this, you know, kind of almost a quarter uh, border collie. So I can kind of see it him in it sometimes. So it, it's just sort of the positioning of his ears. Here's another picture of him. You can kind of see where his ears are kind of flopped, um, that sometimes he kind of could have that border collie look. But we were really surprised about that, that he was, that he was border collie. And he acts like a German Shepherd. I mean, he's, he's just got German Shepherd traits. So we, you know, wouldn't have questioned it. When we look at, so this is a little background or the back door view of um, how things look on Embark. I'm going to share this with you so you can see. So you can look at their um, breed and ancestry. So this kind of gives a little bit of an overview. I mean, it, you know, this is what a German Shepherd is. They talk about their courageous, a keen sense of smell, da, 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 border. Oops, border collies are energetic and work oriented, herding dogs. And then if you go down here, you have this like really in depth list of um, their DNA breed origins. Um, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? I just want to mention too, I'm not affiliated with any of these 
So this is like very, uh, you know, I'm not receiving any funding for any money for doing this. Um, I wanted to give you a completely unbiased overview. They have, you know, they go over this whole thing. Dogs have 39 pairs of chromosomes, um, almost double humans of 23. And they sort of explain that. But then, you know, I was like, well, well, what do these mean? You know, so I want to just mention they were pretty helpful at Embark because I wanted to better understand, you know, what on this chromosome, how much of this, what is chromosome one? I mean, I had no idea. So um, border collie seems to be, you know, part of this and German Shepherd. This one over here, we have all German Shepherd on this on this chromosome as the second one. So, um, you know, it was like that going through this, all of them. It was like, well, what what portion of this chromosome and what are they? So anyway, the people over there are pretty helpful. So this is kind of like the, you know, um, a very extensive list, but it, it shows over here, you can kind of see, um, you know, so number 13, and then it explains what that is. And this is a, so it's a, so that was nice. I mean, they were very easy to contact um, as far as like, I had to email them. I will say that with Embark compared to Wisdom because I called Wisdom because I was trying to find out, am I going to be looking at the current way your site looks for if somebody buys your panel, um, your testing, is it going to look like that? And they did explain to me, mine won't because it was older one of the things I wanted to talk about with German Shepherds was people, one of the common questions, I kind of did a little Google search, you know, what do people want to know most about these testings? Um, and one of the questions that came up was, do they show hip dysplasia? With hip dysplasia, you can't do DNA testing for it. Apparently, you know, you've got to do the like AKC standard for it. They have to do a certain type of like x-ray. You know, you, you can't just do this and find out if your dog has a predisposition to getting hip dysplasia. Now, degenerative myelopathy, you can, so that was interesting. So there is a benefit to, to doing this because you can find out a lot about, um, so look, they have of the 256 genetic health risks we analyzed, we found one result for him. He had one copy of the variant we tested and it said he is not at risk for developing this based on that. You know, certainly I'll talk to my vet about it and see this is nice because you can just share your vet information. You can send this to your vet. So that's an advantage of this. You can look up his relatives. So I did email some people. <laughs> I went a little crazy. I think I sent out like six or seven of these to his closest family members. Um, one person got back to me. But it was interesting because she was able to show me that, um, where is this? She was able to give me some information about where he was potentially bred, which I had up here and now it's gone. But um, it was nice to be able to just kind of look at the kennel and just get some information about that. Um, that may be where he was bred, but it would be where at least he has some relatives that were from there, which is probably more likely. So it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward you know, the, I, I like the interface here. And then I also did, oh, and I also did gut health for him. So he's had some, you can kind of tell like he, his gut wasn't always the greatest. And we, we got him at about three and a half and he had, had not the best food. I, you know, he, you know, didn't have the best upbringing until he was, it was helpful to see that, you know, we ended up taking some measures after that. His um, vet is actually going to come on the show in the near future who wrote a book. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. Um, that has to do with gut health. It helped to know that, that it was rather off his, his gut microbiome, which we suspected, but it was helpful to see more in, in depth information. I was hoping I could show you this, but for some reason it's not. Um, and you know, so this is interesting to see. It can tell you what bacteria is missing. Um, and, you know, we were able to talk with his vet about this. She felt it was very helpful. She felt it was um, evidence-based and it helped us make some decisions about some things we decided to do with him. So, 
you know, the, you can really go down a rabbit hole with these uh, tests. And so if you like that stuff and you like to research and dive in, you know, this is, it can be very helpful. And you do have to pay extra though. And then I did Cheyenne. So I will show you her. That is Cheyenne. And that is one of the dogs that Cheyenne supposedly is according to wisdom panel. So I'm going to show you the wisdom panel that was done a long time ago. So that is a bulldog. If you recognize, <laughs> um, you may recognize that that's a bulldog. Now, I don't know if you think that she looks at all like a bulldog, but the only thing I can say is that she does have, I guess when she squinches up her forehead, like sometimes you can kind of, I don't know, maybe think that there could be little folds there. Maybe her sister though, um, they came up as a litter from North Carolina. Her sister does have a lot of the folds. Um, so, and is not as furry and neither is her brother. So I could kind of see it in them. And then her stance is a little bit, she's kind of got that stance, but let me show you what Embark, I'll do the comparison. So here's Cheyenne wisdom panel a long, long time ago when she was a baby they indicated now this is i guess their interface may look a little different than this right now 25 percent bulldog 25 percent manchester terrier which is also known as a rat terrier 12.5 percent chow chow you can see that um you can kind of see labrador 12.5 percent and then they have this like breed groups herding terrier guard so then you compare that to now with the embark what do they say do these come out to be the same or similar. So this was interesting because they have her 33.6% American Pit Bull Terrier. <laughs> I'll bring her picture back up in a second. Um, American Foxhound, that wasn't in there. Uh, Laboratory Retriever was in there. Chow Chow was in there. German Shepherd. So they went and they further like identified that herding breed. So she's got some of the German Shepherd, like her brother. And then they also had Boxer. So. I would say that there were some things that were similar that showed up, but not everything. And so it was interesting too, because I did some research to figure out, well, are they distinguishing actually for a American pit bull terrier? There's a lot of discussion on the internet about this. Um, wisdom panel does not identify the American pit bull terrier in their research or in their DNA. They um, kind of put them all together. Um, so they would not have her show up as an American pit bull terrier. They don't do that testing. And I add, and so this was where also Embark was very responsive because I did reach out to them and I asked them, do you kind of like stand by your, your research as far as saying that she is a, a pit bull terrier? And they did respond and said that they do distinguish, um, they do test for it, that it is its own breed in their opinion. You know, so they stand by that, that she would be actually a pit bull. So this is Cheyenne with a, compared to a pit bull. And you I mean, I guess you can kind of see the the stance again like i guess that's not showing her from the front but you can kind of see it um but not really right? yeah she doesn't really look like a, a pit bull and thank you again for being here tonight i know things are a little screwy but um i do appreciate it if you help us out here on the channel give us a thumbs up and uh share us share us it does help so thank you so much mel mac Mel Mac is very helpful and I appreciate you so much. Thank you. So I just thought this was cute and funny that she is this like, you know, pit bull. Now her personality is she's kind of like got an anxiousness to her. You know, she just can't kind of came kind of timid to me. This is the, her baby picture. And you can, you can kind of just look at her and see her personality, you know, <laughs> um, She's very timid and, but she does have this like spunkiness to her and she knows what she wants. So she can be kind of demanding. Um, so I, I guess I could, you know, see, you know, 
that sort of stronger personality that you might associate with a pit bull terrier. And I do not put them in a category of aggressive. There's some interesting studies that show some other breeds that you would never think test dependent. It is certain tests that they're doing that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily, everyone might not agree. Those are standards of, is this something that shows a dog is more aggressive? But, um, they did do certain testing that show that, uh, actually the pit bull terrier is, is less aggressive. It's just a matter of how they're raised essentially. Um, I am going to talk about the cats too, because I did look into that. I thought this was kind of funny. I asked the AI on the program I use for pictures to give me a picture of Kane and that Kane, the German Shepherd and the Collie. And this is what they came up with. <laughs> I don't know if that's really what they would look like if they got together, but there you go. <laughs> so this is the, a comparison on a website, dnaweekly.com. I really, it was getting overwhelming trying to compare these two because they have different options for each one. Like, it's not like there's just one thing you can buy from Embark and one thing you can buy from, from Wisdom. They have different levels. So this site was helpful because it showed a little bit of a chart here. Um, you know, some things that are common to their basic ones. So the breed testing, but they both have 350 plus breeds that they look for. The relative finer, now this is behind because this, the relative finer wisdom fa panel does that too now. Excuse me, that has been like updated and improved that you can now look for the relatives on both of these. So I really wanted that. I wanted to be able to find the relatives and find out about them and if they're like them and how they act and everything and how far away they might be. And I wanted to go like show up at their house and no, I'm just kidding, but my husband was like, yeah, no more, no more emailing. <laughs> we got one response. I was normal. I mean, I just said, you know, our, our animals seem to be related, our dogs. I was just curious about yours. Anyway, health conditions tested 200 plus for both. So it seems though that this is something that I noticed. I think that from, from my research that it seems like the Embark goes deeper into the health conditions, I, I would say. So if the, that would be kind of like the distinguishing thing. And then the pricing is a little bit different. The starting price with, um, this is something that stands out, is that the Wisdom Panel pricing seems to be a little bit less than Embark. But then you kind of have to look at like what you're getting with the starting packets of the two of them. So I was actually just, I had that up here. Okay. So is that showing? Yeah. Okay. They actually have a deal running right now. You might want to check it out. Um, Embark. I think they both do. Yeah. Wisdom panel has the wisdom panel. This is their basic and this is, um, you know, the breed mix tells you more than just it's a, a Shih Tzu or La La. Las, how do you say that? Las Abso. It can tell you why your dog has to herd your whole family after dinner. You know, they go on and on about the breed basically in this um, basic pack and um, or basic testing. So you, they screen for 365 plus breeds. They do test for this MDR1 test. It's a medication sensitivity test. Um, find your dog relatives um, and trace their family tree back three generations. So that's like, that's their intro one. Now I will say that I kind of waited around with, I wasn't in a huge hurry to do this and I ended up getting like, I think a Memorial Day deal with Embark. So you can, it's a lot of times you can get a deal with these, a, a discount. So yeah, you can see this is a little bit pricier. They have a discount right now going on, um, but they have a different thing where they have, um, their intro thing that's 99 so that's closer to the wisdom intro test i guess you'd call it for the mixed breed is 99 and it's a breed again breed breed breakdown and confirmation um ancestry and geographic location so they go back and they show you where they may come from relative finer just like wisdom support from genetic specialist i'm actually not sure what they're talking about with that that one I didn't, I sort of missed. I don't, I'm not, I guess maybe you can get that if you want it. Like if you purchase it, I'm not sure about that. I have to check that out. So 
when you go up to purebred, you get the same thing, but they do it different. They split it up. They have like, so if you don't know what your dog is, you do the mixed breed test. And then if you, uh, do know your dog, I did the purebred for a cane cause I thought it was just a pure German shepherd and it worked out fine. It still showed me that he was also that border collie. And then see, you're going up in price to get the breed plus health test and this is a two pack but so this one yeah so you have this the basic one 84.99 then it goes up to looks like they are having a sale on the essential right now so it's also 84.99 down from 104 that's everything in breed discovery you go deeper into it it's a more in-depth report you get insight into health and traits so you're getting, some, you're pretty sure your pup is 100% dash hound, but you can learn what health risks. So that's like the one I got, showed some things with, with um, Embark. But from what I understand, um, when I just, I did some research into people's opinions about what they got for the um, health traits. Between the two of these, people seem more satisfied with the Embark health traits. Again, I, I don't have the wisdom to look at as far as those go for a recent report, but it did seem like people felt like, you know, do some research into it, see what you find if you feel like um, looking a little further to see what you get for that. Now, this was a thing, their breakdown of breeds. So they sort of claim that they give a better breakdown of breeds. And there was some information that I was, what I was finding is that it's difficult to actually break the breeds down to the degree that they say that you can break it down into. One of the articles I was looking at, was it this one? Yeah, this one, the wire cutter, New York Times article. And we'll get into that cat part too. They were basically saying that it's, it, from what they found that it's a little bit unlikely that they're actually giving you accurate breakdown when you get into like these these really small percentages of of um what they might have like a two percent of this a three percent of this um so it gets kind of complicated i didn't want to get into that myself and try to explain it on here i'm not a specialist in dna it can get a little crazy but if you want to deep dive into that this was actually a good article from newyorktimes.com comparing embark and uh i'll put that in my description later um i couldn't find how long it took me to get the original wisdom test however uh what people are saying it took two to three weeks. It takes two to three weeks. That's what they say, actually, wisdom. And people are saying, yeah, it's two to three weeks to get their testing. So when I did this, um, the Embark I did for Cheyenne, it took me about four days to get the kit. It took one day for the kit to get to the lab. And then it took two weeks from that point to get the results. So I guess, again, you're looking at you're looking at about three weeks from start to finish, from the time you order it to the time that you get the results emailed to you. And then um, with Kane, uh, that one, it took three weeks um, and his gut test came in like the day after I got the other information. So it didn't come all at once, but they do a lot of updating you. You get a lot of emails after you, you register your test and you send it in. They start sending you emails like, you know, your, your lab is on the way. Now it's in our office. Now it's being processed. Um, you'll have about this much time left. So it's nice. They kind of, they update you and let you know. So I hadn't done the wisdom panel in a long time, but I did the embark and I compared them to what I was reading about how wisdom currently does it. So with embark you get like a like a cotton swab and you you know you rub it in their cheek and you put it in this little packet you put it in a box and then you send it off and everything it's very straightforward people were saying that like the wisdom was a little a little bit di different you have to like let it dry for 30 or 60 seconds in a cup or something and then you put it in the thing and you get two of them i guess in case you mess one up you get one with embark but it's very simple. Just read the instructions before you start and get everything laid out and, you know, make sure you do it right. So it's very simple. It was not an issue to, to rub it in their cheek. I didn't have a problem with them. It, it was fine. 
it wasn't a huge issue to do that. Cat DNA. Okay, so <laughs> your feline's genetic code is kind of when I from when I your feline, a cat, <laughs> feline's genetic code is more difficult um, to identify their breed than dogs. So there are tests out there for this. Um, there's something called base paws and one, and then Wisdom Panel also has testing. There's probably some other ones, but those were the two I initially saw. But it's interesting because like the base paws says they test for only 21 different breeds, which to me is mm, it's a fair amount. And the company stresses though, that it is not a breed verification test. So they don't determine pedigree. I guess some breeders mistake it that it's a breed test with confirmation of their pedigree um so i guess it you know you can't find out like they were you know like the german shepherd thing where i was trying to figure out well where did he come from um his lineage you can find that out with the dogs but you can't find that out with the cats um and also so they also mentioned that they they don't test for all known cat breeds and they also said they need more samples they they admit to this for their database so they need to grow a little bit i guess uh wisdom panel for cats also they say that it tests for more than 70 cat breeds plus dozens of genetic conditions and traits uh but it does say that they also can't they can't report a cat's exact lineage so um they're basically saying that the breed that they detect could represent the background of a genetically related breed rather than the one reported. So maybe it's not exact, um, gives you kind of a, a sense of what they are. So it, it kind of seems like it, I, I thought about doing that, but I'm not really sure I'm going to get, which is exactly what my cat's breed is. Just so Gia, yes. <laughs> um, Gia, I know she hasn't been here. Her, her tower is behind me. You can't really see it. It's, it's like right behind my head. If she was here, you would know she was here. But um, so she has somewhere to go. She could be here. I think she may be locked in the room with my husband, actually. I think that's what's been happening when I've been in this new location. Because um, I moved the studio into a new area of where we are. And um, I think she keeps end up ending up in the other room when I'm doing the show. <laughs> so that's why she hasn't been here. But... I think she'd really like to be here. Yes, felines are complicated. Um, oh, you don't think your dogs would sit for the test? <laughs> um, I know you haven't seen her in a while. If my husband's listening, maybe he can send her out if she's available. I definitely think she's missing being on here. Um, so did anybody in the in the chat ever do this? Did they find that these things seem to um, make sense for you? I mean, to me, the most interesting thing about Cheyenne was that um, that one had her as a, a bulldog, and, and then this one actually went and said that she was actually a pit bull, and then you look at her, and it's kind of funny. But... Um, she does, also she does boxer things, which she came up as having boxer. She kind of does that like thing when she's like playing with other dogs. Oh no, Tammy, you're, I don't think I saw, your your kitty had a stroke today. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, you're definitely you're in my prayers. Um, she's in my prayers. I hope that things get better with her. Um, and the, oh, I'm on your big screen. That's a little scary. I, <laughs> these new TVs, the way they show stuff is like <clears throat> a little bit too in depth. Do you, <clears throat> I'm here. Do you, is she here? Apparently, we have a guest. As some of you may know, Gia has a little bit of a temper. <laughs> um, so there she is. Ooh. There's Gia. All right, she's handling it okay. She's kind of like stunned by the lights, so she's being okay. <laughs> so yeah, but um, 
Yeah, I'd like to verify how much she is Norwegian Forest. I'm sure she's Norwegian Forest cat, but like the percentage and everything, I don't know. Um, there's definitely something else in there. So, <laughs> you miss everybody? There you go. Um, oh, there we go. She's out of here. Okay. So, I uh, do think that this is beneficial. I think it's, it's the thing that, um, oh, also with Cheyenne, they showed um, something that she had that I was not aware of, which was like a liver enzyme that would show up as potentially, oh, it would, it's always at a lower, it could be at a lower level than it would normally be. Um, so the thing about that is that if they go to test her for something, then they may, um, they may, they may, do, they need to keep that in mind. So like if they test her for this, for her liver enzymes, and then this one is at a certain level, they have to think, well, this could be off because it's, she has a predisposition to it being low. So, and then see, these are all her, it's more colorful because she's all these different breeds. Uh, her, her chromosomes are all these different colors. So, um, she is, <laughs> she's kind of a daddy's girl in the sense that she, um, it's kind of like she's figured out that, I don't know how to put it, not, I, the, it's sort of like she sees my husband as, I'm trying to find the words of today's society that are going to come out right, and I can't think of them. He, she sees him as more of like the, the male, like the male and the, the cat, um, what do they call it, the, um, oh, I can't think of it. The thing they call when ca cats, I can't think of it, the word, when cats are in a group, there's a word for it. Um, and I think that she sees him as the person she's got to kiss up to is essentially what it is. Clowder, that's it. So, um, is she part Maine Coon? I, I kind of think it's more like, I think she's, um, Norwegian forest cat. The two of them are, can be hard to determine, but she's got more of the traits of a Norwegian forest, actually. Um, yeah, she is a beautiful girl, but she's got a bit of a temper. So, um, yeah, kind of like that, that alpha male. And my husband also doesn't, it, she, she will mess with me because she knows she, she, I mean, I'm a, I'm a softie and, uh, you know, so she won't mess with my husband as much. I mean, not that he's like mean or anything, but he's, he doesn't tolerate some of the behaviors that she might display. <laughs> um, I think it's clouder as opposed to pack. Um, so yeah, so, uh, there was something else. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about the, um, Okay, so they show, yeah, so this was something I also didn't show you, um, dogs that have a similar mix of Cheyenne, this is what they might look like, she looks nothing like these dogs, so it's just really funny that she's so fuzzy and cute and everything. Um, the interesting thing about Cheyenne, though, is that her brother is also, she's got two siblings that are like short hair, um, more like this one, like Lenny Lou over here, and uh, or Hazel. She's got a brother and a sister like that, and then um, she has a brother that we saw a picture of. We never like connected, but is is furrier and has like a mixture of colors. So I think that her mom may there may have been two dads with that um, with that litter, <laughs> as does happen sometimes. So her mom was very popular. Yeah, so low ALT activity. That's what it was. She's likely to have that. It's not a health condition. It's just her, her baseline is low. So you have to keep that in mind. So they do give you these insights. So, I, you know, I have to say, I feel like at the end of the day that this was worth doing. Um, 
you know, I knew that Kane's gut was off, but I wanted to see the extent of it a little bit more in detail, and I wanted to be able to share it with the vet um, so we could be more specific about what we were going to do with him. Um, so it was worth it to me to, to buy that extra test for the, the gut microbiome. Yeah, he's her, he's her backpack daddy. Um, so I don't know. Nobody else here has mentioned that you did these tests. Um, I might be the only the only crazy person who does all this stuff. My husband was a little less into this than I was, I will say. I don't know. I think it's all very interesting, and I like to know all about them. So I wanted to find all this out. Um I think I, I think I pretty much, oh, and I, you know, I wanted to mention too, like a, this is a very, this is not an in-depth animal communication episode, but I am an animal communicator. So, uh, you know, for me, I'm always curious, like, how do we apply that? How does that come into play? I'm always thinking about that animal communication, being understanding what your pet is feeling and what they're thinking. And you know, I think it's very interesting to see, to think about like, does it, does it matter that you communicate with them? Can it potentially change a predisposition in their personality? And I, you know, I do think that you, because of just the, the nature of animal communication, because you're better understanding your animal and what they're I, you're understanding them better. Like with people, if you just communicate and you understand a person better, you're going to have a better relationship. You're going to be able to work out um, things that might be even problematic, but make the relationship stronger and better. So I feel like with these, um, I, you know, I think that you can do that with animal communication. Now, is it going to affect a predisposition of their breed um, what, you know, what they come in with, with their DNA, not necessarily, they're going to be who they are on some level, no matter what. So part of Kane's, the work we have with Kane is to, um, you know, always be kind of repeatedly working with him around, like he wants to be dominant. He wants to be alpha. He wants, he's German shepherd. He wants to, that collie part is pretty, like, it doesn't really, you know, they're both herding dogs. So it doesn't really manifest in any particular way for him. I don't think it, I don't think it waters him down as far as like his alpha German shepherdness. So we're constantly having to work with him around some of his personality things um, that we can appreciate are part of his breed, but maybe they don't always, you know, they're not always exactly what we would like. So, um, oh, your staffy has a little problem with the gut. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I always kind of, my disclaimer is I'm not a vet, um, so I don't diagnose or treat, but I can certainly, you know, talk about my experience and I have had a lot of training because of the work I do with acupressure and massage and just working with animals through the years. Um, you know, I don't know if you've tried just some probiotics, um, to help with that. That's, that can often be helpful. Um, just making sure it's a good, a good one, a good brand. So any questions about this? Uh, is there anything maybe I left out that people are wondering about these? You know, just thinking about is like in a Chinese medicine perspective with acupressure, you know, we're always looking to, to balance. And that's kind of the whole thing about that is that you're, you're basically trying to support the body to balance itself. So as far as, for instance, Cheyenne's liver levels, having that predisposition to them being tested as lower to me, that's just something that I'm going to be more mindful of. It would be something I might include in her acupressure is, is liver points. Um, and then of course with Kane, you know, had I not already been working on his gut stuff, I would have begun to incorporate that as part of his acupressure 
the work I do with him on, you know, with stomach meridian and, and things around that kind of incorporating that. So I think that it can be very helpful from that perspective too, just to, you know, incorporating it into their, whatever regime you're using. We usually talk about holistic here, but you know, there, I am not against Western medicine. I just think it's as needed. But, you know, more here we're talking about how to prevent issues and do what we can holistically. So, um, any the stroke lady had about up as well. You know, after something like that, which she's been through, I would actually, you know, without getting, it's hard to kind of say, like, without doing an assessment or pulling out specific, um, it, one thing you can, I will say with, with issues like that, where they're potentially losing consciousness and it's always important to get them to the vet. I'm not saying to, to not do that, but this point here, um, right under the nose, is really good for an animal or a human that might be losing, has lost consciousness. If you're trying to, to bring them back, that's a good point. But, um, you know, as far as right now, um, I think being, you know, really gentle work with her right now, I would, you know, I do have my, my playlist with some acupressure, well, quite a few acupressure points on there. And I think that would be helpful to go look at. But um, I would even just do some nice energy work. Just, you know, you know, rub your hands together, set your intention to be really present with her and, you know, calming for yourself too, because when we do energy work with our pets, it helps us to feel like we have something we can do and helps to give us some sense of, um, like you have some, it's important to feel like you have um, some kind of agency, something you can contribute, you know, something we can do for them in these situations. So, and it just being very quiet and present with her and then, um, just putting your hands on either side of her uh, back, like along the shoulder and just gently putting your hands there and just, you know, sending her love and light. It's a little different than petting, um, you know, it's just being more intentional and communicating with her, just letting her know that you're there for her, being present to her. Something you also could do is some tea touch. I had Linda Tellington Jones on here a while back. Um, it's been a while, but, but if you go on the, in the playlist and look for tea touch, um, it's basically doing like little circles. And it's amazing what these circles can do on the body. Um, yeah, there's a, a library on here um, with all this stuff. And then, you know, also just, you know, take advantage of anything I have. I have a free, free classes on Animal Intuitive Academy Podia. It's in the description podia.com. I have a free 90 minute class for communication. That's kind of a, you know, with what's going on, it's like a shorter way to connect in with her. It's a lighter class. Her head is stressed backwards from it. Well, I hope did, did the vet, you know, what are they right? What, what else is going on? Like, is she being given any kind of medication or, um, but, um, I mean, you could do some light massage. Uh, you know, I wouldn't do anything too heavy duty. Um, you know, even if I'm going to work with an animal that's had medical things going on, I always get uh, clearance from the vet to work with them. But some nice light massage to help with that, like, tension would be good. But, you know, the thing about the issues that she's having, I don't know where, you know... I don't, I don't want to give you too much direction because I, I don't want to overstep my boundaries with a stroke. You don't, you know, I don't know where that is in the body. If she's got a clot that, you know, you don't want to, um, 
cause anything to happen any anymore. So you could also check with the vet too and just ask them um, if they feel it's okay for her to have massage. Okay, so you've been doing massage. Okay, and she has cushions. Okay, yeah. I'm so sorry that you're going through that. That's really difficult. I know. Um, I'm really keeping you in my prayers for her, for Lady. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, it's not easy when our pets aren't feeling well at all. It's so hard. But I'm glad that you're here, and this is a very supportive community. I think all of us were, are, you know, similar probably in the way we react. We're just, we just want them to feel better. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, you do it. You know, do what you, you, you know what to do if, if it's the right thing to take her. Um, so, yeah, and that, yeah, that's where you can get that free class. Um, right now I'm keeping the class on the Podia website. It's, it's like a, not on my own website, but you can get to it through my website, which is intuitivetouchanimalcare.com. That will always be a way to access my classes. Um, it has a link to get there. It just, my website can't hold all that information. You have to do it on a separate website. So teaching website. Um, so, well, I would love to hear if people, you know, end up watching this in the replay and they've had some interesting results from their, um, from doing these tests, I'd love to hear it. Um, I think it's pretty fascinating. All right, well, I think that's pretty much it. She is starting to work havoc. She's starting to climb all over things, so um, I'm going to go, but uh, I will be back probably not next week, but I'm kind of spacing these out a little bit right now because I've had a lot going on, but I'm trying to get back on here a little bit more consistently. So I will I will be in touch and, you know, always check the comments. I always read those. So feel free to put anything after this in the comments if you have a question or anything. And everybody take care and be safe and God bless. Thank you.